Okay, so we're, we have another treat for you. This is, let me let him in the room. This is Ernesto, who's a little nervous about being on with me, but that's okay. This is, let me let him in the oh, room. You gotta turn off the volume on your, on your little nervous Ernesto. about being oh, on wait. with me. The volume for the video feed of us. Yeah, no, I know. I just clicked on the, uh, on, I closed the, I should have known better. I've been working with VC for a long time. <laughs> but Ernesto, yeah, have... it is so good to see you. Hello. Oh my goodness, I have to have 100 million views before you're willing to come onto a live feed with me? Um, no, it just doesn't match in times normally. I, I noticed that the live feeds are on when they are almost finished normally, so I tend to not notice things. I'm not as much in Facebook as I used to be. And honestly, that's mostly because of, you know, the pandemic and all that. It has become very toxic. And that's the reason that the whole thing of, of the group and the work that we have been doing here has been a lifesaver for us. But mostly, to be honest, most of my Facebook use no, nowadays is GSOW. <laughs> Well, that's fine. We have a lot of people who will say, I don't want to have anything to do with Facebook, but they'll make an account and they'll just use it on our secret cabal. And that's it. And that's fine. No, I mean, I, I do. I, I have actually gotten back into arguing with a few people over in Facebook about health things, but in a different tone. I But yeah, the pandemic has been a time for blocking a lot of people, which is very sad, but it's it just became untenable yeah but yeah I, tell but us yeah tell, anyway tell, tell the audience who you are where you're at well, i'm ernesto and i'm now in mexico i used to be in argentina i've been jumping back and forth from argentina and mexico my whole life and i have a very i would say that i have always had a very toxic relationship with adult men <laughs> because of how i was raised mm -hmm. and and yeah, and I was, I had been for years thinking of what to do, how to do something about that kind of misinformation that was really jarring to me. And then I found the skeptic movement, probably in podcasts, mostly here and there. And I was listening to a lot of them. And then you started appearing in a lot of them, being in, in interviews, complaining constantly that you didn't have enough people outside of English oh, language. Oh, I started appearing on those podcasts. And yeah, I, I, being yeah. interviewed again and again in one podcast, in another one, in another one. And it was like, again, and it was at that point, at least it was what? Four, closing to five years now? 2017, you joined, finally. Yeah, and then, and I was like, and but I had been hearing a, for a while about it and it was always this thing that pinged me like yeah we don't have enough people outside of english language uh, speakers and i and, and i was like okay it, it and then one day i just wrote them facebook message you said, it was, you said as european skeptics podcast oddly the european skeptics conference uh european skeptic podcast talked a man in mexico into joining this team yeah it was the funny thing because as I said, it had been a few different podcasts, but that was the, just the last drop, the, like <laughs> like the straw that broke the camel back. It was like, okay, even here, okay. <laughs> no, and it, it's even funnier than that because the European uh, skeptic podcast talked uh, an Argentinian Mexican guy then in Argentina, later in Mexico, to join the, the secret cabal. So it was like, and that was the final trigger. That, and then it took me quite a while to go through the... It did, didn't you? Uh, yeah, at least it's a supposed year. supposed to take four months, but... Yeah, but I, I'm not really good at that kind of thing. And I was on and off into the training and on and off into the training and... I moved countries in the, and I was meantime, nagging in the you meanwhile. And, nagging you. and I and I actually moved countries in the middle of all that. So it was it's a good excuse, I mean, to deal, to be delayed. And then I think I had not really completely finished the training when I saw 
Rob's page about the Momo challenge, I think it was. Oh, it, it's Rob's, right? Uh, Momo challenge? I can't remember. Was it Rob or? We did a lot of discussion about it. Yeah, but and then I, because the Momo challenge was going all the rage and I was hearing about it and I was getting mad about it. And I saw the page and a message in the group, like, so can someone try to translate at least a part of it? Because it was a large page. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And I just simply did it. And it came out well. And it, it was like, and. Here and it is then, in English. The Momo Challenge. And it's one of our biggest Wikipedia pages we've ever yeah, written. It's, it's amazing. It's, um, oh, let's see. It came after the Blue Well game. It came after the Blue Well game. And it's yeah, Momo a complete Challenge. hoax, of course. Almost and, six million page views in English, and uh, and it's almost a million page views. Page and views. Here it is in Spanish. Spanish. Retro, retro de mano. The, el reto de momo. De momo. It's exactly the same. Hand, uh, yeah. And it's uh, almost a million views now, which was quite scary for me. Like I wrote <laughs> a page, and suddenly I saw, and when I wrote the page, when I translated the page. It had not, it had the, 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 the initial burst in Spanish of the whole thing had already passed, but it was fairly, a lot, it had a lot of views. And suddenly it went into some media outlets again, uh -huh. a couple months later, I think. And suddenly it was again in tens of thousands of views a day. And it was, in a way, it was very satisfying. And in another way, it was really scary because it was a sense of, sense of responsibility like that thing that i wrote okay i translated it from a very good one but that thing that is in a way my responsibility yeah. is being seen by lots of people a day and yeah, it, was, it, it was quite scary in a way and then i went it took me a little time to get used to that and started working in different things and I started doing the translations for well you know me I started with spe uh, specifically with alternative medicine stuff that I that was my trigger in that way my my trip in this and in the in the skeptical movement the stuff is not the same that I, I think that most people come from either religion or Sasquatch ovnis and all that. And then maybe they get more involved into this kind of thing, except the people who are into medicine, but I'm not a medical anything. I'm, and But my thing is started from there. So, I, so the first pages I was doing well, first was Momo Challenge, and then I started into going into the ones that the alternative therapies that I that I despise profoundly. <laughs> I, there's several that you've done that I have never heard of. Um, and uh, here's one that you, can you tell people what this is? And this has received, let me see how many page views is it? Oh, this one. It has oh God, what are you gonna bring to me? Oh uh, this but that, that, almost 200,000 page views. But the, this is the one thing this is the thing i was raised in in a, an environment where all alternative things were common so i know a lot of these and some of them i think of them as really a commonplace or mainstream like the the batch floral remedies which mm -hmm. is this one which is funny because a lot of people take them thinking they that they are of homeopathy which is also not real but but has a more but at least uh, homeopathy at some point was thought to be kind of real until we <laughs> learned better uh, but this one is not even that and when you tell people the actual principles behind it they simply think that you are lying that you are making a joke well, of it tell, because tell people what that is i i well said, i've supposed, never heard of it before okay batch was this guy who thought that flowers had the different flowers could have different qualities to solve problems for people and 
he started identifying which ones could do what. But then comes the interesting part. How would he choose which flower had a, was good for what? Oh, basically psychic powers. He would literally put close his eyes and put his hand on top of the flower when he was feeling that strong emotion about something. And the one that calmed him, that was the one good for that. And how was the preparation made for the flowers? Oh, basically he would collect the um, dew drops in the morning from the flowers because this, but, and his idea was that the principle behind it was that the sunlight going through the water to the plant would activate that water somehow and give it the qualities of powers. Mm -hmm. Which actually, if you think about it um, for a second, is backwards because if the light comes first through the water and then to the plant, not the other way around. But, mm -hmm. but okay. And when he couldn't collect enough dew, he would start doing that artificially. But it's complete nonsense. Where, however you look at it, it's complete nonsense. But yeah, you but it's viewed almost a million times. Because, and I thought it was fairly mainstream, but maybe it's- No, no, I take that back, 200,000 times, I'm sorry. Which is a lot. I mean, it, I, yeah. I thought it was very mainstream, but, but this has happened to me a lot. But yeah. you can find them in a lot of pharmacies. Maybe it's not in the US that much, but in, the, in Europe and Latin America, I'm fairly sure it's quite mainstream. So- yeah, that kind of thing ticked me off. And <laughs> I, when I found that I could do something to put decent information out there that people could reach, that people would actually reach because it's the first result you get whenever you Google anything. And lots of these pages already existed, but they were, in the best case, they were they didn't have enough, they didn't have citations or they were not detailed enough. In the worst, they were completely backing up this kind of crap because the people selling them have gotten there before. Right. Or even the people who don't sell them, but they are honest believers in these things, honestly mistaken. <laughs> and we have to find these pages to, you know, you don't, like you said, you come across them sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you come across them. Sometimes it happens because the pages are linked one to the other with, by related themes. And that has brought me having some very funny thing happening to me. Like, okay, oh, okay. I start working, oh, this is related to this one. Oh, I also know that one. Oh, <laughs> that thing used to be a thing when I was a kid in the places where I was being raised. Oh, this one is not really known, but, but I know it. It was like, oh, crap, where the hell I was raised? <laughs> Like, we have that works. Yeah, uh, like spontaneous it, human combustion is the thing. Is uh, spontaneous it. human combustion is nobody's done that, it in Spanish. Thank you very much. No, well. I have been eyeing and following up for a long time already. Oh, really? It's, it's in my list. I, I just oh, how long is this list, Ernesto? Oh, it's too long. It's yeah, yeah. Here, here, here's another one. <laughs> Every time I do a page, I add six to the list. It's like. <laughs> It's never ending. And then somebody in the cabal will be talking about what they're working on and 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 you'll oh, uh, editor's like, I'll I did, do did. it. I'll do it. It's, it's a page that wasn't on your list to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's purely now. What's this? Um, now, this has got 316,000 page views. Yeah, but I think that already existed when I got into it, but it was a very bad one. Uh -huh. uh, the thing is, this is, uh, and, you know, natural supplements and it's all the stuff. And yeah, spirulina is a real thing. It's that's the kind of thing that ticks me off badly. Like, okay, I mean, is, is, I, I have, is GSOW an outlet for things that tick you off? It is, it yeah. is, it is because I used to shout into the Facebook bell void to no effect, you know. It is like, and <laughs> what are you doing? And I thought about writing a blog, yeah, for me and my friends to read. I mean, what for uh, doing a podcast? No, I wouldn't managed to do that i'm not so but then yeah i started fighting less with people that's because, one of my mantras right i i get yeah. it if i see that you guys are fighting with people on facebook i come yeah. after you 
I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, write, I mean, I'll write in the thread, I'll say, what are you doing? Why are you arguing with these people? Yeah. You have time to argue with them. You have time to write Wikipedia papers. Uh, I, have, I have actually gotten into, I stopped, uh, I do get into arguing now and then, but I kind of limit myself to people who I know who could change their opinions, who will actually make an argument of things, mm -hmm. which is nice because I've had interesting interactions and other things uh, I tend to not argue, just make a comment and post information for not for the people who post the original message, but for the ones who will come afterwards to see, for them to see. But then I get uh, useful things from our, from Facebook uh, arguments. For example, I told you, uh, what was it, a couple of weeks ago, I got a name from a very horrible person that, I, that needed a page in Spanish. <laughs> this... Uh, uh, anti-science with a degree person who thought, uh, the guy who says that the COVID vaccines not only don't work but they cause things like uh, diabetes and other and other stuff and different syndromes of course he has no all his studies are now in paper to publish mm -hmm. places because he can't get anything published anywhere serious but then okay here's a name of someone who needs to be known for what he is because he's in the news right so if people google his name they should get a real description of who he is and not simply like his, his website own, or something his website I yeah. mean, it's, and and i really when i tell people about wikipedia editing it's like oh yeah but how do you know and, and like they don't really know how how hard the community is on you. You added anything for which, not, on, not even without a source, for which the source was not trustworthy enough mm -hmm. and it will be deleted and you will be, yeah, attacked. And I, I, I think it's okay. I mean, I got a page that I really like that I published a couple of week ago. Oh, I know. And I got deleted, and I had to admit they were right. It did. It, it should have been deleted, so it, it's okay that it was deleted. And I love the community that is so hard on everyone. And I, I love that it pretty has fairly such a high standard. Yeah, and I have these dif uh, differences of opinion of uh, what should be enough for someone to be. Uh, encyclopedic or not mm -hmm. so why artists could be very bad but or i don't know football players will always be there but a scientist no because they don't they are not so much in the news okay that could be discussed but the standards are so high that i love it i mean and yeah, i get not everybody a lot. have a wikipedia page it's just the way it is you just can't not everybody well to make everybody those can. who have it that much but, more yeah, everyone can, and that's the other beauty of it. But everyone is subject to such a high standard that the result is quite high. So it's... Uh... And some people, how do I say this? And you, you, you alluded to it, like a sports figure, somebody who's a football player, there are different rules for oh, yeah, I, I a didn't football have to... player versus a scientist versus um, something else. So there are rules of notability. Oh yeah, that for I, Wikipedia, I and they can wrong. all be a little different depending on who, who, yeah. what category, yeah. and in what language. Oh yeah, it. Yeah, I understood wrong what uh, your comment actually. Yeah, the thing about notability is, yeah, almost anyone. I mean, not anyone can be is considered notable enough, mm -hmm. and I don't completely agree with the rules sometimes, but I understand that they serve a purpose in it. So there is a sort of equilibrium. So yeah, it, it is complicated because it's a very different standard for scientists and other people. But yeah, and, and the whole thing about working in websites, even when I'm not, even when I don't have the time or energy to translate new pages, which is what I mostly do. I have written some pages from scratch, but mostly I do translations. 
the thing is, even when I'm not doing that, I do go daily at least to check on the edits on the pages that I follow, that I try to keep clean. Uh, I do follow what is going on. And this thing, I mean, today we as a GSW hit the 100 million. You're the one views. that brought it to my attention first. You said, yeah, I, I we're going to hit 100 million in about a month. What are we going to do? Yeah. And the thing is, I do like big numbers, round numbers, and it even when, given the fact that it's not that it has a lot of views, it's not always the the, the most important thing in a in a page. It does give you uh, a sense of uh, of relevancy. If what you are doing is is relevant to the world. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the pages that I have been the, that I have written, translated, or heavily edited have hit a uh, seven million views now. Yeah, in, seven million. It, how many pages? Fifty. Eighty-four pages, I think. I think it was eighty-three or eighty-four. Let me see. Fifty. I thought it was fifty. No, fifty was a long time ago. That I'm sure. Let me see. 84 i'm sorry 84, 84. yeah 84. okay yeah and the funny thing is some of them some of some of my favorites don't have a lot of views the one of my absolute favorites is the the observatorio omc contra las pseudociencias pseudoterapias instruismo y sectas sanitarias which is an spanish organization which is an observatory against pseudoscience pseudotherapies uh, sanitary sects uh, and they do wonderful work that's one of the few that I wrote myself it's a short page it's not a big thing but it's something that I that I love having done okay it doesn't have that many views but I'm sure that it will come handy at some point when they go against some big ultimate company of therapy in Spain yeah, and, you and they go into happened. the news and people will know will want to know who they are here they are there they are that we need some photos a, we need some photos we need some photos but they didn't have any so and they are they are really small or doing wonderful work okay but they exist they can be found at least here and the thing is uh, yes it's small it doesn't have that many views but it's important still. And the other thing is what we have seen is you read, write the page and it has 20 views a day, 30 views a day, and suddenly it explodes. Yeah. Because Somehow or some, other, something happens in the news. Yeah. I have, at some point, I was. The Kardashians. I, I would go, for example, to. I would see the stats and then I would look for the news because. And it happened with the with the urine therapy one that's the oh, did you do the enema one which one oh enema. the coffee enema one also was fun but it, i think yeah, i didn't that's not in the in our stats or is it but oh uh, did you what was it or, called? Or, it, or was it the, yeah the coffee enema one and the other one was a related one the colon cleansing one which were very close one what to would the you other. call the coffee one it would be enema de coffee the cafe yeah enema de cafe it's coffee enema uh, with but the thing is with the urine one the funny thing is that's yeah, it was like that. it's on here it's got 42 000 views yeah and at some point i was like suddenly i saw like the stats go completely up and i was like what is going on and what I found is that Madonna had made a comment about it in an interview. Here it is, Enema de Cafe. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the stats. What here, happened here. there? Yeah. Some that, celebrity is talking about that's it. That's a celebrity talking about it. I'm talking about celebrities. I was listening. I, I have followed Rob Pages and stealing the content and translating <laughs> it without any shame. And one of them was uh, the Goop Lab one. Mm -hmm. uh, how, it's the kind of thing that I, I mean, really. And the result was a page that has, I don't know, 25,000 views in Spanish, something like that. Goop Lab, is that what you're talking Goop about? Lab. 
Ernesto, let me look. Which is a lot. Let me see. You know, and you keep saying that you're translating. You're not always well. The page can be written in. The page needs to be well written in whatever language we're writing it in, and yeah. then it can be translated to another language. But it could. It doesn't mean that we're just doing English and translating Spanish. You've created a bunch of Spanish pages that I, I you, have are, created. you created, not well, not translated from the English. Well, page. I have I have done. I mean, I have mo I mostly consider yeah, that I have translated. But even when I just translate, you can. It's very rare that you can on just do the translation without doing anything else. You and in most cases you do the translation, you fix the stuff in the way, you add the information, you remove information that is not properly sourced, and then you can publish it. Right. Some pages, I do remember the point when after doing quite, when I felt that I had gained enough experience in the, not only in the actual working of it, but in the way to manage discussions that come about when you, edit the page in ways that some people don't like and mostly you will find that uh, practitioners of alternative therapies tend to not like the edit kind of editing editing i wonder what but i have but mostly you will have to admit that they are at least the ones you find here they are actually good people trying to that believe in the stuff that they do so they get offended i mean you are disparaging my 20 years of career. Mm -hmm. I get it. And then I, when I thought I had learned enough, I went in what I, the kind of things that I consider the big ones, homeopathy, acupuncture, mm -hmm. which had almost decent pages in Spanish, but they were not really good pages. They were lacking in a lot of ways. And I went in. And in some of them, I had horrible fights. Homeopathy, for example, you have troubles because it has been declared uh, humanity's heritage, for example. And this one is a funny thing, one because you will see that at the right, I created this alternative therapy info box that didn't exist in oh, Spanish. Oh yeah, Rob was talking about that too. Where, do, is it on this page? Yeah, and the funny thing is, you oh, yeah, oh, it's, oh, in, it's at the yeah. top. It's at the top, uh, right. but but you will see that it. it I did create it, and it, I couldn't create the format because it's complicated in Spanish as a format itself. But it is good enough for like that. It's a it's a an info box modified, but in this page in particular, you will see that it has two info boxes, which is not recommended. It's not normal, but I want this fight to put in the first place oh, here it this is. info box. And then more at the bottom, you have a different one because acupuncture has in the traditional Chinese acupuncture has been declared a national uh, humanities heritage by the UN, mm -hmm. which was an issue for me because I really wanted, the reason I managed to give it uh, the, the first place to the other one is because this speaks about one specific kind of acupuncture. The acupuncture in general is way bigger than the Chinese one. The traditional Chinese one is what just one of the techniques that you can have. The Korean ones have one. And actually the funny part is the reason I, it was declared, the Chinese one was declared heritage. It was because the Korean were about to claim it as theirs as a heritage <laughs> and the chinese government <laughs> went very quickly into oh i didn't realize that yeah it was uh, it, it's a funny thing that funny things that you learn when you work into this thing. <laughs> the things so you pick actually, up, yeah this is a very funny one if, because if you go into the discussion page you will see uh, that i was arguing and I managed to actually, the discussions here are quite things. The, the, the title you said is the, the WHO backs up the acupuncture as effective, for example. It was one of those threads. 
And no, they don't. They just don't. But but it was document over document and paragraph over paragraph discussion. The kind yeah, of thing. Look, that, at, look at this thread. Explain to people what what I'm showing them right now. What is this? So this is the the back side of a page. If someone it's located right of, here. It has In a English different. It says talk. Yeah, it's a discussion page. It's the talk page where people discuss about changes that they are that are not agreed upon by the whole community. For example, someone says that the WHO backs up the says that the uh, computer is efficient, and I am saying that it's not. And then people discuss this, and it can go into very hard mode. This actually is an example where we had to have some administrator level people coming in and saying stop it. Like because you have to be civil, you don't have, you can't accuse people of things, you can't call anyone names. Mm -hmm. And some people lose their temper. By this point, frustrating. It really is. And it there's no it really can be but, it, but really explaining well what this is. But, yeah, well, and the thing is, here is where, uh, let me see. Um, so this was an example for the OMS, is in it, OMS is the uh, WHO in the Spanish. Uh, oh, oh, okay, that's, well, that makes uh, sense now. Yeah, so they, and there was these people saying that it was backed by the WHO, and no, the document said a very different thing, but it was subtle. It it said that they they didn't back the efficiency. They the WHO says that it's that it's uh, that it's a cultural thing that has to be respected, which is saying we are not going to get into this because it's politics. So medically, medically, they say nothing about it. Which I don't think that's responsible, but okay. But so this discussion actually, I was lucky that I had learned to keep my cool head by this time. This is where you get to have your disagreement with people. Yeah, there you have your <laughs> disagreement. But I, but I had managed I had to learn by then to not let myself go into the discussion in a heated mode. So I ended up getting a recognition from one of the uh, live, how they are called in English, the admins. Yeah, from one of the admins into my own page saying that here is your barn star for diplomacy. <laughs> because I ended up moderating a discussion between other two people who were fighting. <laughs> and I am, yeah, and I was like, I want to be part of the fight, but okay, I want. <laughs> you have to grow up someday, Ernesto. Yeah, and yeah, and it, to be honest, it has been a. All this work is something that I'm really proud of. Uh, I'm I, I'm proud of it. I mean, it's it's been should a be. lot of work. You it's, should be. It's been good work. I think it's doing good to people. And now you also have learned a lot of a lot about a lot of things going through it. So it's, I mean, I'm really thankful about getting to be part of it because it's a, it's a good thing, and it's a good thing that it's not only good for others, it's good for me, and it's not only good for me, it's good for others, and it's something that I had been looking for an outlet of for this kind of energy. Because I am an information person, I, I like information, I like knowledge, and I hate this information. It's it's some it's it. I do think it's one of the worst things you can do. I was telling someone today, like, yeah, of course, about vaccines and so. On. And he was saying like it's semantics, and I was sorry, it's not semantics. It's it's uh, misinformation and it's language designed to enrage people and to appeal to emotions and to get them in some cases to die because they take risks they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So 
in this case, it was calling the vaccines experimental and I were experimental. And I was, no, none of these are experimental. Experimental and emergency use is completely different. It's not semantics. It's, it's, uh, it's in an intentional deformation of uh, what really is happening. So, and I was lucky enough that this, this is what I was saying. The, one, the kind of people who actually get into, that are convinced by, argu by good arguments, like he was like, oh, you're right. It's not. <laughs> so, you know, and I wanted to mention too, that one of the things you started doing because of your wife, right? <laughs> yeah. She's, she's a teacher, right? She's a she's a pre, uh, an elementary school teacher, yeah. Right now, it's fourth grade, and I started doing some of the basic science pages now and then because you I, felt that the kids were home. From yeah, I, I mean, kids and they're were looking at Wikipedia, them, and they would look at Wikipedia anyway. And I'm really against this policy in schools that Wikipedia is not a good source that you shouldn't check. And right. I don't like it, so I started going into some of them. And I have done a few, and some of them have a lot of views, but a lot more than I would care to say. Would you give me a name of one so I can pull it up? Oh, let me see. Because the thing is, some of them I... Um, You've got, I mean, he's got a wide, you guys, oh, I see yeah, 84 I have... is a lot of pages, and a lot of them are on pseudoscience but there's some other things in here too that yeah i have i have decided to do for, for example people it like when i do people i did from the start notice that i had to do people i liked at least as much as people i disliked because people would do this <laughs> yeah i mean if i do charmer goalies oh how uh, about this one? Oh, sun gazing that's another one that was in my childhood you see, I use glasses. My mom also has glasses. And that and the Bates method were things that I saw when I was a kid. And this has got 12,000 views, you guys. 12,000. What's that other one you guys were doing that had to do with the sun? What was that one? With the sun. Let's see. I don't know what it would be called in Spanish. I'm not even sure I could do it in English, where they would uh, people lay out naked. And they would, oh, but I didn't do that one. You didn't the do one. it. No wonder I don't see it. No, on the one about the the, the ass sun ass tanning. I would call it. <laughs> I don't know what it was called. That was all the rage for a while. I think it's like, you know Stephen like, Colbert talked about it. And it I was think, butthole burning, <laughs> literally. <laughs> well, we wrote the Wikipedia page, I believe, for it. I think we did. Somebody did. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's one you just did with um, Gaspar. It was. Uh, what is this? Let me see. E N F E R N E D. The funny thing for me was that when I went from pseudo from uh, medical pseudoscience and medical supposed therapists to psychics and that kind of people, I wouldn't have expected when I started. I didn't thought I would do that. That's what I was saying. Yeah, because I don't care about psychics. I mean, I think they are just. I mean, of course they. I, they are. I don't like them. They, I think they are scammers and they take money from me, but it's not something that is close to me in my life. It, and then I got to know about Tyler Henry, for example. And I, I hate the guy. I, I <laughs> oh him. my goodness. So, and it was your fault that I got I to know. I know it's my fault. Brother. I'm sorry. He came across my, I didn't know. I, I'd never heard of him before. He's got 71,000 views in Spanish. Yeah. I mean, he, he earned that I edited his page because, I mean, because they, but then I noticed that if I did a couple of people like this or a Char, or Char Margolis or, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of people who are not likable, then I had to clean myself doing someone I liked. Oh, and is that what you told yourself? Yeah, I mean, I, because I, I needed to. So one of the first ones that I did, because I was at the time listening a lot of the, their videos, and I still do. For example, I did the page for Seth Andrews, mm -hmm. which who is a lovely guy in the, I would say, anti-religion movement, 
of the skeptical side of, or Aaron Ra, you know, who is Did very you know? and but then I found, for example, uh, with this uh, uh, this scientist who she's she has worked a lot with the um, John Goodenough, who has a wonderful name uh, in the battery technology, Brit Marie Hermes. Oh, she's yeah. going to be on Skeptical this week, uh, next week. We're, we're no, Brit Marie, no, Brit Marie is the, is the Brett Marie. She, no, Brit Marie is, uh, wait, I have mixed my people. Oh, well, Brett Marie Hermes is wonderful. And you wrote her. Brit Marie is, is wonderful. She's, but, but I was, the, but I, I started doing some people who were completely un, uh, unrelated, like Maria Elena Braga, who is the scientist, just because I came across the person reading about batteries, the lithium batteries. There she is. And, and they were like, oh, this person is amazing. And they don't have a patient in Spanish and they should. It's like. I, that is one of the joys of the project is that I, I'm learning about people that I would never have heard of. These are people who don't get the attention because they're not in English. And, uh, you know, but they're, they're doing amazing, wonderful things. Here she is. Yeah, I mean, that I, I couldn't get much of the information uh, as if what is there, but she's basically, she has worked uh, alongside John Goodenough. John Goodenough, who has a wonderful, amazing name, mm -hmm. uh, is basically the inventor of lithium batteries and the inventor of RAM memory. The guy has revolutionized technology twice. And, yes. and, uh, and their parents had a sense of uh, humor naming him because he's, I don't know what his full second name is, but he's John B. Barrett, John Barrister. Yeah, but he's always written as John, John B. B. Enough. Good enough. And it's like, and he was good enough. He definitely was. And so a couple of years ago, he was announcing that he had, and it seems he has, I, he, I, managed to get solid state lithium batteries working solid uh, yeah, solid uh, electrolyte batteries and okay but the one who have, was working with him was this maria elena braga and if you ask john be good enough it's 90 years old it was probably maria elena braga who was doing most of the stuff there mm -hmm. so yeah I, I think doing a nice person after a bad person is so Important. do you think that it's possible that that the work you've done, like on her page, could it possibly someday lead to a Nobel or something for her? Because now she's getting more media attention because now she has, you know what I mean? It's it's like it's, it's a chicken and the egg thing. So, well, you know, they, they get famous enough to I, write a page, but then once they get the page, then they get a little more media attention. And then they, I, would, like a, I would like to think that I have help her career at least a little bit i think her well, career sure, sure is big it. by itself but it sure hasn't uh, hurt her her career she's an amazing person she deserves to have a page and also she's part of the sadly unrepresented female scientist community in who should have more representation in wikipedia which is something that should happen that should happen in the right way mm -hmm as we have it, seen this. they have to they have to abide by the same rules yeah and it, and sadly some people create the pages badly when the material to create them correctly is there then the pages get deleted then people think it's a gender discrimination thing and it's not mm -hmm. really it is a scientist discrimination thing for sure yeah. because we were talking about notability rules they are different for scientists but but yeah, it's but yeah, it's it's been a trip and it's uh, a very interesting one to be honest, and a very fun one, and uh, sometimes a very frustrating one. But in general, I mean, the outreach and the when you hear some media citing information that you know that you have put there, <laughs> which happens. Or you, or you listen to someone talking about it and you notice the 
structure of or the details of some piece of information and you're like i know where that came from it's and amazing we, and, we, and it does happen and it happens a lot yeah. i mean you can see articles and people citing stuff and it's like oh that's it's powerful I know exactly I, where you got that information from <laughs> yeah and it's good that it and also i tend to tell for example to my niece and nephew or in high school, junior high school. And I tell them like, yeah, you can use Wikipedia, but you will have to use it in this way. Go there, look at the information and click in the link to the source. And if it, you don't see one, you don't use it. Right. If it doesn't have a citation to it, and if it has, and it sounds weird, look at it. Sometimes it's not right. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's one of the oldest books, uh, tricks in the book that you see people going on and leaving the. I have seen people change the title of an article to change the meaning. For example, if the phrase says that, I don't know, crystal therapy is not, it's, it's a pseudoscience, they change pseudoscience, they just remove. The, war, the three letters for pseudo and let it that science. Oh, and, I've not seen anybody do that before. And in the citation, they do the same to the link, to the title of the article that says the same. I've seen that being done only a couple of times. I've never seen but that. that subtle enough that if it's not catch at the exact moment it happens, it can be left there for a while. It's, so, yeah. Wow. So give me your last thoughts. I'm going to let, um, I'm going to uh, bring, I'm going to well, bring uh, one of your friends. My last, who are you, uh, who is waiting uh, just to know? You'll find out in a minute. Okay. Well, just uh, first that I'm really, ha uh, I'm really uh, thankful for this whole thing and to be part of it. And I'm actually awfully proud of being part of it. So it's, I think it's doing a good work. And I do think that uh, without someone managing this herd of cats, it wouldn't happen. We are so, cats. You are a bunch of cats that I'm constantly chasing. Yeah. And, and it really is an amazing work. I, I don't think it's an easy one. And it's an amazing and neat and very important job, I think. I think that when that comment that gave birth to all these that, oh, it's important to edit the Wikipedia pages. What, 15, 20 years ago almost. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, more important than you could notice at the time. I think it's exactly. amazingly important. And thanks, because it, it's been, you have been the driving force behind all this. <laughs> and, and that's not a little thing. Well, I appreciate it. And I'm so glad that I stuck with you, even though it took you a year to finish training. It took me quite a while. I should have kicked but, you out many times. No, but I would have come <laughs> back. And I would have come back. And hey, look at the result. 84 oh, I, pages. I'm thrilled. Million views. <laughs> I wish we had more Spanish editors. And we have I a have, couple that I are think, training. I've been trying. And we have, uh, we have someone who was going to be and then the pandemic did a job on us, but things will will happen. And I've had uh, the luck to have some of the Spanish editors correcting my pages mm -hmm. because that was also quite important. <laughs> Not a few corrections came that way. But thanks a lot, Susan. Well, it's great to see you. Thank you yeah. so much for all the amazing work you've done. And, and uh, you're going to have to help me with the next 100 million. <laughs> OK, let's do it. Yeah, it will come. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.